him tonight. He's our miracle worker, our way maker, the light in our darkness. Let us worship him for who he is, for who he is. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And this time, we invite Sister Brooks to lead us in prayer in Psalms 91. Praise God. And we'll just stand for the reading of the words, for the praying of the words. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise God. We are going to be praying Psalms 91. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will sing of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by that's far as the day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord thy refuge, even the Most High, thy invitation. There shall no evil befall thee, Neither shall the plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the other, the young lion and the dragon, thou shalt trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Bless the Lord. Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, trust. Oh 
Scripture read Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, reading from verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I have gave Egypt for thy ransom and Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Thus saith the Lord which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as thou. Remember he not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall he not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. A new thing. And praise God. Praise you God. made a way. You made a way when my back was against the wall. Made a way, and I'm standing here only because you.
was against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Jesus for making a way. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Praise God. And now it's time for the word of God. But before that, I just want to welcome you one more time into the house of the Lord and into the presence of the Lord. It's another Wednesday night, the night for our word explosion, a time when we dig into the word of the lord to enrich our hearts to enrich our souls and to enrich our lives so we can live to the glory and to the honor of our god and our savior we are live tabernacle and we are happy to share with you on the internet tonight in our word explosion and so we continue in the lesson that we've been sharing with for the past two weeks and this is our third week and without any further ado, I'd like to introduce and to welcome our teacher, a teacher extraordinaire tonight, our preacher, and a lover of God and the Word, known other than Sister Vita Dawson and the Holy Ghost. So let us welcome her to continue this powerful lesson that she has been sharing with us for the past two weeks. to emphasize I am standing here. So we're going to stand. There are some things that have happened to us, minister what, that should cause us to fall, should cause us to crumble, should cause us to drop, should cause us to faint, Sister Marjorie Johnson Campbell, but we're standing tonight. We're not crouching. Brother Selvin, we're not buckling under. We're not crouching. We're not bending. <laughs> We're standing. I want the devil to know tonight I'm standing. We're going to chant it five times. I'm standing here. And you know where your here is. In the middle of your troubles. It's Shama. In the middle of your trials. In the middle of a temptation. But you're standing. In the middle of the difficulties. But you're standing. In the middle of a disappointment, but you're standing. Glory! I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm standing here. I shall not be moved. I'm standing here. In the midst of a pain. In the midst of the challenges. Where are you, church of God? You're in cyberspace. Let the enemy know I'm standing here. I'm not running, Mother Grant. I'm not running. I'm standing here. Bring your Goliath. I'm standing. I'm standing here, Sister Brooks. So much has happened, but I'm standing here. We're going to shout it five times. We might not get into the Bible study, you know, because from we start the, the worship, I just feel the Holy Ghost running up and down this place, running rampant. And I'm begging him, move, oh Lord, in me. Move, oh Lord, in me. What the enemy meant for evil. My God is turning. Sister Lucille, I'm standing here because my God is turning things around. Somebody hear me, no man. I said, I'm standing here. I'm waiting down here by the river. Because you're turning things. You're turning lives around. You're mending broken hearts. Hey, so I'm standing here. <laughs> God tell my enemies, I'm standing here. Shama. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I told you tonight before we started, I came for deliverance. Deliverance I'll receive. You said you would deliver me, and that's what I believe. And I'm standing here until I get it. 
Don't stop me if I'm supposed to teach, not preach. But brother, what I feel the Holy Ghost saying, stand. You stand. Shama. Stand somebody. Your, your knees might feel weak, but stand. Your belly might be pain in you, but stand. Your back might be hurting you, but stand. Your head all confused, but stand. Sister Becky, where are you? Stand up. Don't let the devil frighten you. It's not as if Jesus has never gone into a surgery room before. So we're going to stand tonight for Sister Natalie Carter. Shama. Because Jesus knows what he's doing. I said I'm standing tonight, Sabrina, because my God knows what he's doing. I trust him, so I'm standing. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Brethren. I don't want you to hold anything back. Those of you on cyberspace, feel free to join us. We're going to lift our hands as high as we can get them. We're shouting five times, I'm standing here. Hallelujah. Ha. Somebody near tonight, you've been false accused. <laughs> I don't know if it's at home or at the workplace. Shama. <laughs> I don't know what the accusation is about. Saha. But stand right there. Co-workers accuse you. Stand there. Stand. Hey. Glory. I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory. We're going five times. Mercy. Ha. Huh. Brother Williams, I don't even know if we're going to have Bible study tonight. Because Jesus looked like him about to hurricane us. And I said, have your way, Lord. So after two, we're going. One, two. Here, one, two. I am standing here. 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 Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Holy Ghost. Shama. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Caution changes ahead. <laughs> I'm not the girl I was. Not even last week, Sister Lucille. I've been rearranged and changed. Caution changes are ahead. Caution changes ahead, part three. Glory. I'm standing here waiting for my change. My change will come. Oh God, I feel like preaching instead. I know pastor watching me. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Your change will come. I know the night has been long. I know it has been dark. I know it has been rough. But stand still. Holy Ghost. Your change is coming. <laughs> Glory. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Your heavy burdens, they will soon pass over. Stand still and watch your God work. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten where you are, <laughs> what you are facing. But tonight he's saying stand still. I seen you move. <laughs> you move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. <laughs> and I believe I'll see you do it again. Glory. 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 I'm gonna disturb the singers, you know, so we're gonna sing that part just one time. I've seen you move. But you know when apostolics say one time, if Holy Ghost catch us one time, don't really mean one time. I've seen you move. And even if you can't sing like me, you're going to sing it with all of your heart. Long liver, kidney, everything. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe...
Glory, just that part. I don't, want, I don't know if it's a chorus. I don't even know where in the song it falls. I just know it has gripped my heart. Let's sing it just once. One, two, three. I see you move. You move the mountains. You move the mountains. And I believe. I believe. I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again. You made a way. Made a way. When there was when no there way. Was no way. And I believe. I believe. I'll see you do it again. I'll see Lift your hands now in faith. <laughs> Don't look at the circumstances. Don't look at yourself. Just your faith working right now. All things are possible. Glory if we only believe. If you have seen him move before. <laughs> if you have seen him move before. If you say if you have seen him move before and if you believe that he's going to move again not that part sister work with me now, man and if you believe you're going to see him do it again keep your hands up just the chorus sister pat just the chorus praise god gonna count you down to 10. Ah. there's a scripture i love my brother howard richards it says the kingdom of god suffered violence and the violent take it by force I'm going to count it down from 10. I'm counting in descending order. And when I get to one, the Holy Ghost will tell you what to shout. The devil is telling you nothing is going to change. He's a liar and the father of lies. The devil is telling you that God is not going to see you through this one. I wonder why. <laughs> Glory. Glory. So I'm counting you down now as you meditate on the chorus. I'm counting it down from 10 to 1, and then we're going to shout. Shout what the Lord tells us to shout. 10. Shama. Hands still up. Come on, everybody. Hands still up. We're doing this in unison. Both hands, Brother Richard. Both hands. My second hand can't go up because of the mic. 9. <laughs> Remove every doubt from your heart, from your lung, from your liver, from your kidney. Brother Williams, I told you that vehicle is coming. <laughs> 8. Ha, 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 ha. Whoever wants to laugh, let them laugh. Seven. <laughs> hey. Let them pout out the lips and say, ha, 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 ha. Six. Glory. <laughs> no net. No net can trap this girl. Five. Glory. Nothing. <laughs> JC, I can hold you back from getting the Holy Ghost tonight. If you want it. Nothing, my little daughter. Nothing. Five. And if I said five twice, it's a number of works. Four. <laughs> Angels descending. Three. The devil thought he won. <laughs> but I hear a sound. Show more. I said I hear a sound tonight. And number two. Come at Grant, I hear a sound. I hear the shaking of keys. The right what? I hear the shout. I'm getting ready for the one, and once I let the one go, you shout, one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is mine. But I watch this mine. I'll tell you about it later. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. It has my name on it. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Glory. Change is ahead, part three. You may be seated. Holy Ghost. I don't have a feeling this Bible study is not going to go much more than maybe two slides, but have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Glory. Have your way, Jesus. Glory. We're going to either slide three. Sister Kelly, caution changes ahead God's way and our part. And then we'll come back to here. Just that's the only revision we're going to do. We said God has three major wage, ways to bring changes to our lives. Salvation, sorry I called the wrong name. Salvation, sufferings, and responsibilities. We looked at salvation last week. We looked at suffering the week before the first week. So week one was suffering. 
we too were salvation because God ordered it that way. Go ahead and worship. You're not disturbing me. And week three is responsibilities. And I believe there's going to be a fourth week. So caution changes ahead through salvation, suffering, and responsibilities. Therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Ah, if I suffer with him, I shall reign with him. Glory. Fire in this house tonight. Oh my God. Praise God. I said fire is in this house tonight. You're not disturbing me. Go ahead and take your blessing. That's why you put on your clothes and came here. The devil gave you a fight and said, you know, see rain or fall. Where you go? Nobody not their church tonight. Hallelujah, that liar. Glory. Back to change is true responsibility. But we are here tonight and the windows of heaven are open. And the blessings are falling tonight. It's joy. Joy. Joy in my heart, brother wife. For Jesus has made everything right. I declare it tonight over your life. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I'm going to run into trouble because I'm giving another minute for this kind of up to earth, down to heaven thing to go on. It's 8.19, so one more minute. One more minute in his presence. Hallelujah. You want cyberspace? Join us as we worship God. Oh, he's changing us from the inside out. He did it when he saved us. He did it through suffering. And he's taking us through responsibilities tonight. Responsibility for some. Responsibilities for others. Because we have a long list. But we trust him tonight. <laughs> Go ahead. I hear the Holy Ghost. Give me that message, brother. Give me that message. I came for it tonight. Brother, what I know the devil tell you. Don't bother come tonight. You have too much to do. You have a deadline to meet. We have one deadline. And it's our appointment with Jesus Christ. One deadline, one deadline, one deadline. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Ha. Some of us do not experience change or the change God wants us to experience because we keep doing the same salt thing over and over and expect to get David results. And I'm using Saul as if it was not a person, but a state of mind, a behavior. We keep doing the same Saul thing over and over, but we expect to get David results. You cannot behave like Saul and get David results. If you don't remember anything from this Bible study tonight, let this be etched in your heart. Don't fool yourself and don't make anybody fool you. You cannot behave like Saul and God treat you like David. No way, no how. God changed Saul's heart. Keep going, brother. What? That is touching me. God changed Saul's heart when he was appointed king of Israel. But Saul did not work from that changed heart. You understand, Sir Lucille? So the Bible says that God gave Saul a new heart. When Samuel anointed him, he spoke in tongues, he prophesied. But he did not go any further from that moment. He went back to the old heart. Some of us, have, of us inside there, we've gotten the Holy Ghost years ago and we are proud to tell it as we should. We've been, we've been baptized in Jesus' name, but we've not allowed the new man, the new heart to rule us. Romans 8 verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If we keep going back to the old heart, we cannot get the change that God has designed for us. I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord. Do you have the heart for the plans? Are you changing the way God wants you to change? That's the question tonight. Saul did things his own way. He was Frank Sinatra. He did it his way. He made the same mistakes of disobeying God and rebelling against God. And he would disobey God and he would rebel against God. And Samuel would give him the instructions and he would disobey God and he would rebel against God. Over and over again until he developed a spirit of rebellion. Stick up in right there. <laughs> People say, how could God love David? 
You tell me where else in the Bible you heard David commit adultery. Raise your hand and show me the scripture. I challenge you tonight. Once he numbered God's people and God punished him. Tell me if you read again where David numbered God's people. What am I saying? The difference between David and Saul was that Saul learned from his mistake. Both of them made mistakes. But David changed. Each time he was corrected, brother Jai, he changed. He took the corrections and he effected the change. But Saul, as soon as the prophet spoke to him, he had an excuse ready on his lips. Lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. An excuse, sister. I taught her that. After a while, your excuse is a lie. Hmm. It's a lie. So, when God sent the prophet Samuel to correct Saul, he did not repent. I want you to notice this word, you know, because it's a very important word. Saul did not repent. What do we mean by repentance? Repentance is a godly sorrow for sin. And repentance means that you are sorry you did the thing, you wish you had never done it, and you're going to try your best to do what? Never, ever to do it again. That's how we know you repent. Come here, please, brother what? Oh, you're under the anointing. Can you come? If you're, if you're under the anointing, I'll call your wife. Stand here for me, please, sir. Minister what? So here is Minister what at the altar. I pass. I step on his toe. Oh, gee, I'm so sorry, Minister what? Oh, gee, I'm so sorry, Minister. What? In politics, in politics, and I still come. Am I sorry? No, I can't be sorry because I'm walking the same way. I'm walking towards this foot. So after a while, brother, what don't want to hear any more sorry for me? As soon as he sees me coming, he's going to move his whole body now because he moved his shoe, he moved the foot, and I'm still coming. So. I want you to notice 1 Samuel 15 verse 30. Saul did not repent. We know this because he did not change his mindset. And he did not change his behavior. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He knows when we change. 1 Samuel 15 and verse 30. Can we get that please? Thank you so much. I want you to look carefully at the words. You can sit down when the Holy Ghost tells you to sit down. Ah. So, when you go home, read the backing up to it. But the backing up to it is that Saul again disobeyed God. I don't even know how many times this is. And Samuel is talking to him. Look carefully at the words. Then he said, I have sinned. Sound good, don't it? Sound good so far. Like him acknowledging him sin. But read the rest. Read what follows. All right, go again. I have sinned, yet honor me now. I have sinned, yet and not just honor me now, but did you hear him say, I'm sorry? Did you hear of mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Purge me. Did you hear any of that? You hear, I have sinned, but honor me. In the house of God, there are some people doing wrong, and they want you to honor them. Don't look at this girl. But what if you're wrong? I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Honor me now. Look what he's concerned about. Before the elders of my people, and before Israel, and come, come again, dearest. And he's saying to Samuel, as if he meant Samuel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. Worship the Lord? What important word is there? Thy. What does it mean? Whose God is he going to worship? Samuel's God. You see how many errors he has made? Are you seeing his heart that there's no change? Thank you so much. The man of God points out you are wrong. You say, I have done wrong, but honor me now. Because the people are there, are looking at me, and I can't afford to let them know the king's sin. <laughs> and then, come with me, Samuel, because if you come with me, it will look like what? 
I am right. Yes. Don't call this girl when you do wrong. <laughs> don't invite me to your wedding. Don't invite me to your birthday party. Don't invite me to nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to keep company with you until you repent. It's, it's look hard. I want you to notice something, you know, what God did. So if you think I'm sounding hard, you're going to hear what God says after this. So here is Saul, back to the slide, darling, thank you. He expected God, I'm going to worship the Lord. You're not even owning God. You know you're wrong, and rather than say, God, wash me. I have done wrong. Cleanse me. Restore unto me. No, God owe you something. Them lucky me come at church. Oh, come in about the plan for come. How oh, lucky for see you? Where you get that theory from? We must be glad that you came to church. Oh, you came to see me? No, brother. Don't come to see this little wretch. And we must honor you. Pat you on the shoulder and say you're doing well, brother. He expected God to bless him. And then he had the nerve to get upset with David. Some people have the nerve to get upset with Sir Lucy. Because you're living right. How are you going so far? Yeah, what, Sister Brissy, every service you run around church. But you're not run around church, you're on the floor. What did I come for? To hold on to the heart and the altar and said, I will not let you go <laughs> until you bless me. He began to hunt David like a common criminal. But God was with David. I repeat, I want the slide up. I repeat. And if you, re if you don't remember anything, don't worry, I'm watching the time. If you don't remember anything from this Bible study, we cannot keep doing the same Saul thing over and over. We keep rebelling and disobeying. Is Sister Dawson saying you're not going to make any mistake? I did not say that. I said you keep making the same mistake all the time. Although you have been corrected so you know it wrong. That means you're in a spirit and a state of rebellion. You don't have an excuse. You cannot be doing the same Saul thing over and over. And expect to get David results. It get man begs much more God. So sister, what I know I can take you. But what? But what don't even eat much? Dar, dinner. Oh Lord. Jay, I'm tired tonight. See if you can open that in a sardine. Although him love sardine. You expect her to say that every night at Buddha Week? There's no discussion, there's no arrangement. That sound like love to you? So how are we, how we giving God sardine, sardine praise every night? <laughs> how are we giving God sardine praise every night? Then we want oxtail blessing. And when him give Dawson the oxtail blessing on your backs. Praise Jesus. <laughs> We're on responsibility tonight, changing us. When our prayers are concentrated on asking God. Second thing I want you to remember. This is the slide I want you to put inside your heart. Our junior children would say, resonate. When our prayers are concentrated on asking God what he wants from us and for us. We are opening the door to meaningful changes in our hearts and our souls. I'm going to say it again. When we begin to pray prayers that are concentrated on asking God, what do you want this little girl to do? What do you want for my life? I am opening the door for meaningful, divine, glorious change to take place in my heart and my soul. When I stop going to God and God, the red dew, and it is... Light bill behind it, Jesus. And it is. <clears throat> I know the summer coming on. I wouldn't like to tell you. I said the light bill going, going, going. And I'm not even paying it anymore. Because at the same time, you can't stay at the hot house. Because you don't want to faint either. 
But when we say, God said, uh -uh, I told you not to come asking me for bread. Once you say, give us this day our daily bread, did Jesus dwell on it? And God, while you're at it, could you give me some lemonade to please Jesus and a piece of chicken with it and some wings? And, no, give us this day our daily bread. Done. Mm. And forgive us our trespasses that continues as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. You see where God put the focus? Not on the bread. <laughs> One line for the bread. Everything else is spiritual. For thine is the kingdom and the worship. But we do it the other way around. God. Many <laughs> want go away for the summer. Shock me, Jesus said. Shock me. Because he must see the heart already. And Jesus, Brother White say, I'm going to this and that. Sorry for Brother White. Paid promise of to stay, Jesus. Because I plan to go foreign this year. And Jesus, you know the ticket them at summertime. <laughs> Glory! <laughs> So, God wants to change us through responsibility. But if his own responsibility is going to keep you in church, that's not what I'm teaching you. Remember I said salvation first, you must be saved. And I'm going to shock us now. A lot of us inside here are not saved. <clears throat> our behavior, our attitude, as something happens, we behave like Peter and we come into him. The first person react is the carnal man. Then how are you saved? You're not saved yet. You, you had the conversion experience. But the old heart is still pumping and beating away. Right, Brother Selvin? Hmm? When you talk to Brother Selvin, you get a gentle answer. A soft answer, turn it away wrath. But grievous words... How many times has church done so the devil send you see him, brother and sister? Don't look at me like that. One of them, I know somebody from outside the church, you know. It's not somebody from over that other Joel bar over there. One of your see him, brother and sister. Because essentially, we are not truly saved. Is your all on the altar? Notice I said we, and I never said you. I said we so don't go away getting offended i said we we need a deep change come on we can't keep as somebody talk to us they get the same response all the time the same response i got last year and from 2020 no it's supposed to be coming down depending on what it is or it's supposed to be you know the level can't be the same but you quarter the government for a change in your salary. <clears throat> she went there. You don't want your salary to remain the same. <laughs> you don't want your life to remain the same. But you want to give God the same. Is there something wrong with that picture? Talk to me. Is there something wrong with that picture? Of course there is something wrong with the picture. So God gives us responsibilities. Even though God didn't agree with <laughs> I was about to say God weird, but God understand what I mean. God is different, you know. His way is different. So even though Saul was not his first choice, the people said, hey, be careful of your cry out to God. God just give me a husband, God. Everybody is married, I'm finger empty. Give me a husband, Jesus. Me want flash me left hand. God said, wait, no, wait, no. I know the plans I have for you. David, in my groom, David, you know. But they couldn't wait for David because everybody else have a king. We've got to learn to change the way we approach God. Change our mindset and say, God, what is it that you want? Not God, I want a husband. And here's somebody now, she can't see that talk. November come at 35 years. So not still I listen to that woman then. The devil tell you all kind of foolishness when they're ready, you know. Why are you looking at me like that? Huh? Because the devil wants to blind you. Hmm? So that also can't talk. <laughs> huh? And we start to tell God what we want. Rather than God. <laughs> what wilt thou 
Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus, who thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the maca, the pricks. Okay? Then he said, what wilt thou, what do you want of me? Let's close our eyes and just ask him gently. God, what do you want from me? I'm tired of telling you what I want from you. I'm tired of digging you down as if I gave you something to put down. I want to know tonight, what do you want from me? Specifically, Jesus, me beat up. What is it? What do you require of me? I know the principles. I know the doctrine. But for my life for which you created me and brought me out of Sheila's womb, the doctors looked at me as a baby and said I wouldn't live. My name was to be Winsome. But the doctor said I wouldn't live and my mother prayed. And I survived somehow. The name was changed to Vita, Latin for life. Why did you spare my life? And years later, I lay on a university bed, university hospital with a sign over my head. I had three minutes to live and you speared me again. Why? Why? What do you want from me? You know your story, so fill it in. <sighs> I'm watching the clock, don't worry. Because we ladies having a meeting after this. The responsibility of king was meant to draw Saul closer to his God. And I think you're a slide ahead of me. <laughs> the responsibility of king was meant to draw Saul closer to God. When God gives you a responsibility, whether in his house or in your home or at your workplace, is not to give you a badge of honor. It is intended to draw you closer to him. Everything that God does with us, Sister Brissett, is designed to bring us closer. That's all he wants. Closer, 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 close to thee. Close to thee. All along. It's not to break your brother self in. And you say, God, how? Oh, draw closer and you will see. I dare somebody tonight. What you're going through. You're saying, God, who can this be better? Draw closer. <laughs> hey. Let him whisper in your ears. Hey. Hold me close, Lord. Till I hear your heart beat. I want to feel your heartbeat. When we draw closer to God as we work for him, and I'm coming on to that, changes takes place through the experiences involved in working for God. So now, remember, the aim is to draw closer, not the work first. We draw closer. Then he appoints us. All right? And then as we work for him, changes begin to take place through that experience. There's an increase in perspective, how you see things. There's an increase in knowledge, increase in skills. And we learn to listen to his voice. And after a while, we get better at listening to his voice. We pray more. Yes, if we take the responsibility serious. <laughs> when God give you the rest, because you're only thinking about in the house of God. So let me not give you that example first. When God gives, when God gave you Abigail, brother, what? When you prayed and said, God, I have a son, but he's all for his mother. Give me a daughter. And against all odds, God gave you Abigail. It's a responsibility that was to bring you closer to God. But what? You know I love you. If it's doing anything else, you are wrong. When you ask God for a husband and God give you one sister, what? It was designed to bring you closer. So each for the other and both for the Lord. 
And if, if anything is responsibility is a husband and a marriage, I can tell you that. November coming is 35 years. I think I'm qualified to talk. I think I'm the, the longest marriage inside here. I'm looking around. I do believe. Uh, Sister Books, you can't mind for 35 years yet. You're young. Praise Jesus. Amen. So, God gives us these responsibilities to bring about a change in us. Hmm. Before you became a mother, there were certain things you would do. When you become a mother, <laughs> in fact, by the moment you find your pregnant sister, what? Changes. The doctor is in the house. Glory. Come on. God give you a promotion at work. Your boss, top. It's going to bring you closer to God. Because as you are at work, so you're depending on him more. And changes are going to, you're going to mature. You're going to grow as long as you don't let the old heart rule you. It's a very practical Bible study, you know. Because Christianity is very practical. So, the brother white that we saw before Mission Sunday and Sunday is not the brother white we see now. In just one service, we saw changes. Here is physical change. So, church is not the same. So, even they take it down, Sakadija, so wake up. Even they take it down tomorrow, the change would have already taken place. And the picture is in our heads. For those of us who are mission minded. We won't forget the car. So not only are you changing, but you're helping others to change. Change the way they see, look, and feel towards the things of God. Now I want to caution us, because there are two things. Huh. When I stood before the preacher, they said, for better or worse. So you can stay right here in the house of God and change for better or worse. Your, your, your heart can become hardened or, or it can become pliable and moldable ha -ha, like clay in the potter's hand. Glory! If you can't be clay, listen carefully, children of God. If you can't be clay, sister Lucille, in the potter's hand, you can't go on the wheel. And if you can't go on the wheel, you can't change from just clay to a vessel. I know this is not clay. I'm going to say it again. A field of Holy Ghost. Sister so, so Sabrina, if you can't be clay in God's hand, moldable, can knead you and take off peace and bat you, huh? and shape you, you won't reach the wheel. Because in order to reach the wheel, he has to deal with the clay first. Then it goes on the wheel. And after you go on the wheel, further changes take place until you are a vessel of honor. Because God don't make vessels of this honor. Hmm. Glory. Watching the clock. The responsibility of king was meant to give Saul and anybody else inside of here, all of us, not just responsibility of king now, but responsibilities to give him opportunities to experience the miracles and the wonders of God. The closer we get to God, the more miracles and wonders we will see. I hear a few amen. Don't stay from a distance. God don't have no COVID. And if you have it, come closer. <laughs> COVID can't separate you from God. Hmm? So, as we draw, God, as I said a hundred times, hyperbole, exaggeration, God wants us to experience more and more of him. But we cannot experience him in our unregenerated, unrepentant, rebellious, stiff neck. He said it. 40 years they were in the wilderness. Why? I can't do nothing with you. I can't work with you, he said. You're going to stay in the wilderness. Yeah, ball. God is dry. Which part me there drought. Check yourself. Sometimes we're in the wilderness because of our attitude, because of our behavior, our resistance, our rebellion. So the cha negative change, change for the worse is taking place. Instead of, yeah, you're there for 40 years. I'm way off the show for it. 
and then you cuss out the new ones them as coming. You cussing out the Davids. Because you're doing the salt thing, but you want the David. Yes, blessings. Getting it. Awesome sauce. So, when God gives us responsibility, is to experience the miracles and wonders of God. This would allow God to use us to be a blessing to his people in Israel. So, when Brother White called me on Thursday, I said, Austin, I don't think this car thing going to work, you know. I don't think so. I, it, I said, Brother White, God gave you the idea. You came to the office, we sat down, and we said, this is a great idea. Now, tell me why you think you're feeling that way. Who wants you to feel that it's not possible? If God give you the idea, would God give you an idea that is not possible for you? That makes sense? Okay. So I talk him through it. I said, it's the enemy that doesn't want you to make that car. Because the enemy knows that when you make that car, it's going to make a difference in the service. It's going to make a difference in our minds. First of all, I said to him, we've never had a car in here for mission service yet. So first of all, it's the first time. And first impressions, last. So it's going to stick in the minds. And I said to him, it's coming over cyberspace. See there? You're going to be a blessing to his people. And it's going to bring about a change in you. Next mission service, he's going to want to come higher. Change. He set the bar there. He's going to want to take the bar. Change. That's change too, you know. The bar was there. The bar is there. That's change. Don't have a shallow view of change. I'm watching the clock. Don't worry. All right. We can always have a part four. Hi, pastor. <laughs> so, when we experience the miracles and wonders of God, it changes us. Sister Watts, sorry Sister Watts, if I'm, if I'm hurting you, just let me know. Sister Watts' testimony changed after the miracle God gave her with her lupus. And when she thought that that was just fantastic, the miracle of Abigail, with each miracle, you change as in you grow in your appreciation, in our little bird understanding, bird brain, understanding of God, in our experiences with God. We are developing, we are evolving, and we are revolving at the same time. Revolving as in radical transformation in the good sense. So we must expand and expand this change. So when I put the water, my husband said I come away with one word from America after, after working there for four years. When I put the water in, in a cup, and put it in the freezer. The water does this. <laughs> Watch me. I'm a teacher. So yeah, yeah, that's we we, we, anything we do, we teach. This is the water in the cup. Am I right? So if you allow it to turn ice, when you go, the water that was just taking the shape of the cup has become ice, but it has done this. And if you leave it too long, it's going to burst. If the container is not... I don't know what the cost of physics people will come in now. If the container can't take that level of coldness, then it's going to burst. Watch me get up now. Sometimes I wish I could, but if I jump, yeah, we have a problem. <laughs> when, God, when God gives us his water to drink, it's for a reason. He wants it to... He wants to expand in us. If you sit the water there and do nothing with it, it's going to become stagnant and stink. God said, I would rather you were cold or hot. God don't have a problem with cold. It depends on what kind of cold. So when God put water inside your brother, what? You're either going to make it form ice, so somebody can get cold water, or you're going to heat that thing and get tea. But some ex... Hey! And once I heat it and I'm going to make tea, the color of the water going to change, the taste of the water going to change. If I put it on the fridge to get turned ice, the color stay the same, the taste is the same. I want to change now. Hey! I take it out, I semi melt it, and I add my syrup. 
I'm using the natural to explain the spiritual. If you're understanding, say thank you, Jesus. I have seven minutes. I'm watching it. Actually, two because then we're going to do it. Right. So this might be the you know, second to last slide. So watch Saul. Instead of Saul learning and seeing the miracles and the wonders of God, this king decided to do things his own way. Last slide now, baby, for tonight. So Saul went his own way. The first year, Saul was submissive, humble, and obedient. Aha. But by the third year, you remember King Ahasuerus? Something wrong with that third year reign there. By the third year, my guy feel him don't need Jesus. First year, you get saved. Oh, we could talk to you. Pastor could talk to you. All of a sudden, by the third year, Pastor miserable. Me, nobody talk to me. Me a big man. Me, big man. Me is no big woman. Me don't want me no big woman either. But what? Because big woman, a big responsibility. I wish I was still five years old. And I'm not immature. All of you know me. I'm not immature. But me never want to turn no big woman. Me never want to turn big woman yet. Me no glad to be no big woman. Praise Jesus. So, caution. Change is ahead. We're either changing for the better or the worse. Romans 6, verse 16 and 17. We're taking the scriptures in this slide, darling. Romans 6, verse 16 and 17. We're going to come back to King Saul. First year, no problem. New converts class. What a nice new convert. Don't feel any way new converts. Oh, you can talk to this new convert. Nice. They listen. <laughs> Second year, them knock head with the wrong people. I said it. Third year, them join the group of the rebellious and them can tell you all the stories from 1940. What does that have to do with them? I don't know. And who not to talk to and who to talk to. Hmm. So here we go. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto Sister Lucille, go back, baby. So Saul, first year, Saul was obedience unto righteousness. Second year, Saul started to one foot in, one foot out. Coming to church, pretending to be a Christian, doing all the right things. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, fool. Don't try fool me now. <laughs> Because it's going to get you nowhere. Whether I believe that you are saved and sanctified and consecrated, don't really matter because I can't write a soul name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I can't take it out either. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm? So don't, don't play the fool with your soul. And you know you're not living right. Hmm. By the third year. Huh. So, verse 17. But God be thanked we were the servants of sin, but we have obeyed. So we've made a change. And it wasn't made in the first year alone, you know. Raise your hand, you made mistakes after the second year. Third year, fifth year, tenth year. I wouldn't go going to party something now. My God, brother, we left this almost 50 years now. And still making mistakes. But I tell you something, I'm not making the mistakes I made as a teenager. When I was a child... I taught as a child. I made childish mistakes. No, I'm, I'm I put away childish things. I put no when nobody talk to me. After me, not 15 years old, I put fun. I fling up myself and I carry on. I don't need to put for what? I'm sorry to tell you, but I don't really agree with you. I don't need to put and go in and my car and slam door and drive through the gate. Screech! I don't need to do that when I was 15. Glory, I mean, I'll come back. <laughs> and we are hurt. Not this chica. First Samuel 13, verse 1 and, 1 and then 8 to 14. I have three minutes. Let's go. First Samuel 13, verse 1. Ah, changes for the worse for Saul, but changes for the better for David. First Samuel 13 and verse 1. Saul reigned one year. And when he had reigned, Two years over Israel. Give me verse two. I think verse two is where. Ah, he tarried. 
Let me read three here yet. He tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Verse 9. Uh -huh. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me. Who does the burnt offering? God chose the priest. Who was the priest? And he offered the burnt offering. Be careful. Be, that's, that's a wrong change. You ain't profit. Brother Williams, I don't. I don't want to bother God's prophet. Don't, don't call me prophetess. Don't call me prayer warrior. Don't give me anything else but a, 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 a little girl who's trying to live for Jesus. Because I don't want to make the mistake, sister, what? Of taking up responsibility that God never gave me. I'm not into the fame and the fortune and the competition and the seeking favor. The only favor I'm seeking is the favor of God. So verse 10. Aha. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the birth offering, who appeared? Wait, no man. If God says he's going to come, he's going to come. Samuel said, I will come on the seventh day. As soon as the seventh day appeared, as Saul look out. Saul concluded that Samuel not coming. How often God said, I'm going to come through for you. And you said, God, may we wait too long. And as soon as you sell out yourself. Is me one of the sinners inside here? It's all right. As soon as you sell out yourself. As soon as you do that thing. Sign that paper. Go down that road. Talk to that person. <laughs> Samuel came. I watched the little general now. And Saul went out to meet him. <laughs> Salute. Some of we both see when we're wrong, you know. <laughs> we're, not, we're not humble and I come in like, no, we sin. Make anybody ever sit on to me. Me I come in here today with my nails. Let me see. I don't want to dance. Make sure I come near me. Next slide. Next verse, sorry. And Samuel said, what has thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me. The people didn't ask him anything. And thou camest not within the days of... I said I would come on the seventh day and this is the seventh day. What do you mean? And him blame the people then. Let him turn around and blame the man of God. Stop blaming the man of God and it's that because it's my husband. Stop blaming everybody. Sister Dawson talked to me too rough. Now go back up there. Hmm. Ask the pastor. Mm -mm. Him scratch him head. Right in front of everybody. Everybody knows say me must scratch him head after. You want to live with him? <laughs> Sometimes it's a book when I see some people go and I say, how oh, one of them knows it? That is not even 10%. Huh? Huh? It's like when my daughter was in my class. She said, Mommy, I don't want to be in your class because I know what's going to happen to me. I'm going to get the worst treatment. Huh? Yeah. Teach a hard bun and picnic. Raise your hand. You know why brother said, but look at your picnic dance. You hard for your picnic? Hmm? Of course. You think doctors go so, first of all, doctors are not supposed to operate on them children. But you think, you think when doctors are talking to them, right to them say, you like a coochie, coochie, coo. No, the doctor instinct kick in. Yeah. This is Ruthie. Hi, Ruthie. One day, our brother asked her something. That's pastor. I want you to start leaving. I said, come off on my phone. Because you're talking to me like you're not my sister. No, once you ask her a nurse question, the nurse went kick in. And if of the man disease. For if you had done it, he would have established your kingdom forever. The devil tricked me, brother, what? I mean, and you. I make we do the wrong thing. And we lose the reward. That's a female name, you know. That jealous old bad mind grudgeful. His aim is to rob us of what God wants for us. And so I said, because you've done that now, you lose your throne forever. And I will say like someone, and my daughter is going to smile, was it worth it? Hmm? 
Worse if it's something you're not on for sure for, right? Keisha, wink, wink. What you doing? You're not even having your hand for sure. Hmm? <laughs> you enjoy it and it stop right there, so. <laughs> verse 14. Oh, God. To 1 Samuel 16 and verse 14. And then we stop right here. Because Saul did not allow the second year and the third year because he did not allow the changes to continue. Listen carefully. Remember the first year? Don't get it wrong, you know. Saul did very well the first year. The Bible says, Brother Williams, Minister Clement Williams, that when they went to crown him, he was hiding. He was so humble. He was so submissive. By the second year, and then the third year, he did not allow the changes that he started out with Brother Richards, <laughs> to take place in his heart and grow so that he would mature in grace and in the knowledge of God. Instead, he allowed the carnal man to grow and change him. And in time, he lost his relationship with God. First Samuel 16 and verse 14. Let us stand. We're going to close here. So first it's, oh, it's 9.08, so don't take more than two minutes on the closing. What did I do? Hmm. Brother what? You want me to do it? Oh, God. Brother what? <laughs> but the spirit <laughs> of the Lord departed from Saul. And if that wasn't bad enough, after God called the rebellion and God gave him the long rope, God said, enough. I'm now taking, that's why David said, take not, glory, thy Holy Spirit from me. You feel so good because you've been rebellious for so long. And it look like you're getting away with it and nobody talking to you. And you feel you can do anything in the house of God. Come anytime you want. Do anything you want. Be careful. Because when God decided, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. But brother White, that's not even the worst thing. <laughs> The next line, and an evil spirit from the Lord. What does that mean? God is not an evil spirit, but God allowed the because e God back off. And once God back off, the devil said, okay. Remember Job? God had to back off first, you know. Or else the devil couldn't touch Job. The devil said it. Remove. Boy. Remove him. And then I can touch him. Oh, children of God and Vita Dawson, don't let God remove the edge for the wrong reason. Don't let rebellion, stiff neck disobedience allow the spirit of God to depart because the devil is going to know. The devil was in heaven, so he knows if God is not there, he's free to occupy. He has said to them, he has asked Jaim James, I told you before, and I'm going to tell you on cyberspace. Same thing I told you down there. I won't say all the words here. And I mean every single word of it, my son. And if your mother wants to do anything about it, she's free. Because she will get some too. If I told you the hand of God is upon you. I know it's not easy. I'm looking at you. My brother is right there. Up to today we're talking about it. Seven of us, well, Carl was the baby.
Brethren, I'm glad how my mother raised us. My brother and I have been rolling. <laughs> and I, God knows what he's doing. And we've been sharing and going back into our past and looking how we can strengthen each other because the two of us are here. Janja and God and the others are abroad. And I'm saying, Mark, you will come too far. They suffered too, you know, don't get me wrong. They suffered. Because that's what happens when the enemy comes in and tears the family apart. You're here tonight, you're a husband or your wife, hold on. Don't go tell anybody, say, sister, that's the same, must take abuse. I didn't say that. Keep God in the marriage. When your husband does something wrong, tell Jesus. Go down and ball till Jesus answer you. Or vice versa. When your wife does something, brother, what? Tell it to Jesus. Nobody even call it her. Go straight to the throne room. He will fix it. It's when you're married, I was there. We said it's you, Dorit, and Jesus. I'm closing. Close our eyes. Brother, what? You're going to come and pray. Please, I ask you to just come and pray. You're going to do a powerful one minute prayer at the most too. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. You're on cyberspace. Let us close our eyes. Thank you, multimedia people. You are wonderful. Closing the presentation now. Not the. You're out on cyberspace. It's been rough. Rough, rough walking this road. God is drawing you closer and bringing changes in you that only suffering can bring. I know you don't want to hear it, but take it from a girl who has suffered. Allow him to change you. Hallelujah. Allow God to change you. Thank you, Brother Watt. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. 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 Most gracious Glory. and righteous God. Amen. Glory. Tonight, Lord God, as we stand here, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we pray for a washing, Lord God, a cleansing, Jesus. Oh God, cleanse us, Lord God, from all our carnal natures, Lord God Almighty. Hey, hey. Jesus, that rebellious nature, Lord God, that stays among us, Lord God Almighty. Tonight, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you wash it away, God Almighty. To remove it, Lord God. Send the wind, Lord God, to blow it away, Lord God. Oh, God, it's tearing us apart, Father God. Lord God, tonight we pray for a heart like thine, Lord Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, we cannot go on like this, Lord God, for your coming is near, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, not to be getting ready, Lord God, but to be ready, Lord God, to meet you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, and with those things, Lord God, that we pile up in our mind, Lord God, it cannot take us anywhere, God Almighty. So tonight, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you remove it, Jesus. Oh, God, as tonight, Lord God, we bask in your word, God Almighty. Oh, God, help us to leave here, Lord God, with something, Lord God, that will change us, Lord God. Something, Lord God, that we can lean on, Lord God, and know, Lord God, that you're still God. And now we are not God of our life, Lord God, but you are in control. Father, we pray tonight, Lord God, that you take full control, God Almighty. Help us, Lord God, not to go and leave the word right here, Lord God, but make it find some place in our heart, God Almighty, as a change agent, God Almighty. Father, tonight, Lord God, we place everything in your hands, Lord God. Oh, God, bless the presenter tonight, Lord Jesus. Breathe upon her, Lord God, in a very special way. Anoint her, Lord God, afresh, Lord God, to do your work. Cover them, Lord God, and their blood. Cover our pastor tonight, wherever he is, Lord God. Every saint, Lord God, that is in the sanctuary tonight, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you rest your arms of love about, around them, God. Those in cyberspace, Lord God, lead them, Lord God, and direct them, Lord God. 
cover your people tonight, Lord God, as we're about to go our separate place of abode. Go with us, Lord, as we give you thanks. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. The church say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. A godly commitment to render our services in the pursuit of achievable goal under the divine leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Praise God. Once again, we're Life Tabernacle, physically situated at 76B Winwood Road in the heart of Kingston, Jamaica, the capital of the island. We're so very delighted to share with you. It's our Jesus joy. Join us next week if the rapture doesn't take place. Same place, same station. Praise God. Thank you for joining. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you, saints. Praise God. Amen.